welcome back. Remember, it's still the ballot 2023, and we hope that you can be a part of it through all our social media handles, uh, Plus TV Africa, and uh, just use the hashtag ballot2023, and uh, you'll be good. Uh, we're glad to have a guest here in the house who will be talking with us. Um, uh, Mr. Bola Obba is here, is a public affairs analyst, and so many things rolled into one, and it's our pleasure to have you in the house today. Good morning and welcome, sir. Your pleasure is all mine. Thank okay. you for the privilege. <laughs> We, we've had, leading up to this election, a lot of excitement, a lot of anxiety in the air. Um, I, I don't know how you feel that we have finally, finally gotten to this day that we were waiting for, as if we were waiting for this day all our lives. <laughs> how do you feel right now? At least we now know that we, we were no longer waiting for God. <laughs> we're no longer waiting for God. He's here, yeah. you know. Um, what we make of it is actually incumbent on all of us, mm -hmm. all stakeholders. You doing your role this morning, I think I'm doing my role, but we want to enjoy Nigerians, all of us, especially those of us who are of the age of franchise to, and especially those who have their permanent voters card to try the best possible to do that civic duty because they're uh, unlike in Australia and Brazil where it where it's mandatory and indeed a criminal offense for you not to go and vote uh, most liberal democracies and Nigeria is one uh, most liberal democracies leave it as an option for the citizen to do so this morning we particularly using this uh, powerful platform want to enjoin our viewers uh, even your MD told me a while ago that he was still going to dash out uh, later in, in the day to go and, to go and do that duty. Mm -hmm. And you could imagine if somebody like you could do it, those at home should please, please, for the sake of Nigeria, do it. Do you think that that, that uh, system in Brazil, uh, the other country that you mentioned, uh, should be applied in Nigeria? Because here in Nigeria, it seems as if uh, whoever has the time can go and do it. But if it's made compulsory, do you think our election and our electoral system will be a little bit better? I don't quite want to support what prevails in Australia, Brazil, and a couple of other uh, liberal democracies. I would rather we leave it to choice, option, and a sense of self-motivation. Democracy is a phenomenon that is actually built on the element of choice and option, when it becomes compulsory, it defeats the, the organic beauty of it. So uh, Nigeria is watching this morning. It's another opportunity to reiterate, uh, reiterate the encouragement or exhortation. Nigeria is watching us this morning. Please, if you, if you really can do it, please, for the sake of the country. Mm. Uh, that sounds very, very, uh, you know, optimistic and positive right there. And I'm hoping that Nigerians would listen to that. Mm. It's not compulsory. And we're also thinking that it shouldn't be compulsory. It probably would just defeat the purpose of democracy. So, yes, you need to know that it's your right. And, you know, take that advantage. Go out there and exercise mm. your right. It's your right. And so you have, a, you know, a duty to play. It's our country. Let's decide. You know, who becomes president, governor, uh, member of National Assembly, uh, you know, whoever represents your constituency at the state and the national level. But that's it. But let's get to the crux of the matter now. This election is one that even the umpire had said, we want to raise the standard. I remember vividly in one of those press conferences uh, where Ainek had, Mahmoud Yukubu, they said, we need to raise the standard. Raising the standard, it was also an injunction to all resident electoral commissioners across the 36 states of the Federation. Now, the issue of logistics has always been a major problem. I mean, some people would say it's a reoccurring decimal. I I'd like to share your thought. Do you think that today will be different? Uh, prior to this, I will probably say 2023, but we're here now. Uh, today is the 25th of February, 2023. Do you think that uh, INEC is going to raise the bar? Elections is expected to start at 8.30. That would mean that prior to this time, uh, INEC should have been, I mean, 
everyone should be at the polling unit, materials available, uh, 8.30 on the dot, we should be ready to cast our votes. On the issue of logistics, I am not too optimistic. Reason is that there are many variables outside the direct control of INEC mm. as an entity. Let me give you a typical scenario that INEC has to play with inevitably this morning. INEC has signed working contracts with transporters. And INEC has, in its wisdom, brought in the umbrella organizations of transporters in the 36 states to be, to be its enforcers. Now, in the case of Lagos, Lagos is the smallest state geographically. However, Lagos has the highest number of registered voters mm -hmm. in, amongst all the federating units. But that being said, in the case of Lagos, INEC has contracts with transporters and the, and the controlling transporters union or organization. I wouldn't want to call it a union because in the peculiar case of Lagos, it is now a statutory agency of state. Mm. And that agency has now been barred by a high court from participating because of an individual in, and we have to respect court order. Now, INEC is in a peculiar scenario now where the ostensible enforcer it ought to have used has been barred by a court order. So INEC would find another mechanism of making sure that those transporters don't mess up its logistics today. When that pronouncement was made, on the one hand, Bola Oba was happy because ostensibly it speaks to it speaks to raising the integrity of our electioneering uh, system. However, you and I know that in virtually all the states of the Federation, virtually all the states, the leadership of transport associations usually flat with the state governments. Because most of the parks, virtually all the major parks, are owned by the government. And that is why, and you see, we can, we can, one may want to stand as punished as possible, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we know that these so-called transporters associations or so-called organizations, they actually provide the enforcers that the, polit the political class use to do... The unthinkable. <laughs> I, I, I won't say more than that. But you know what? I want to believe that mm. INEC should have envisaged all likely challenges to the logistical, logistical machinery it has to use, but as at this juncture, Bola Oba will be so circumspect to want to believe that further into the hours, say from 9 a.m., 10 a.m., if there is need, we want to get reports mm. from your reporters on the field, and we can know whether, you know what, whether we will ultimately crush it. But it has been a recurrent or perennial, perennial challenge of mm. electioneering, uh, elections management in Nigeria. At this juncture, I won't say <laughs> it, it will not repeat itself. I mean, just before uh, Yango comes in here, one of the, you know, fates and why Nigerians have been very excited about uh, 2023, it's that it's different. Financial autonomy has been granted, you know, to INEC via the Electoral Act of 2022. Question uh, mark. The fund. Question uh, mark. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> but when you say question mark, I'm wondering what that means. I'm saying some financial autonomy. This should be different. 
aren't actually be able to procure vehicles, apart from what they receive, the allowance that would get to them, I mean, the budget for the elections is separate from what they get annually as a commission. So um, when we talk about that's a concern that you have raised, but shouldn't he have been different? especially with financial autonomy, that INEC can act, procure vehicles, probably get helicopters, uh, because I don't see any reason why we can't have helicopters, uh, you know, transporting these materials, especially to these rural areas, where we're still complaining about our roads not being very motorable. My concern now is the Electoral Act has granted the financial autonomy to INEC, uh, they don't have to go through the uh, Ministry of Finance for approval. The funds get directly. So with this, should INEX still be complaining about, you know, being, having to contract people to transport materials, or they should be able to uh, have vehicles? And what have you to transport these materials? I think you have <laughs> an over-romanticized... <laughs> With due respect, ma'am, I, 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 am I? <laughs> I hate wanting to be rude to my to my host, but you see, I think you have an over romanticized uh, perception of uh, INEX financing methodology. Uh, and apart from that, indeed, in your very wonderful question, wanting us to wanting us to harp or accentuate on the positives, I would rather not look in the direction that you have chosen to accentuate because the financial autonomy, look, when, when you hear financial autonomy in Nigeria, my sister don't be deceived. You know, they, they, will, play, they will play an ostensible card, but the organics of how that autonomy is delivered, you will still de discover that some characters, some latent characters still have a stranglehold on. But apart from that, AME, uh, INEC at this juncture is, is bedeviled by an omnibus status that a single entity cannot effectively perform. INEC is laden with the responsibility of elections management. Like any EMB all over the world, elections management board. However, the Electoral Act also mandates INEC to be the DPP. Somebody, as somebody who was once a politician in England, if I messed up, and I did anything illegal, the Elections Management Board in England would not be the one prosecuting me. The Director of Public Prosecution would say, Bola Oba maybe used the element, Bola Oba maybe went to, say, some neighborhoods in my constituency, and I spoke to some primitive or primordial points, like say, Boys, go and, go and vote for me now. I'm an Nigerian like you, you know. That would have been illegal. Mm -hmm. But it, won't, it, it wouldn't have been the elections management body that would have had to prosecute me for playing up uh, tribal or racial. It, it would have been the director of public prosecution. But in the case of INEC, INEC is laden with that responsibility. Indeed, the Waste Commission, the Waste Commission had recommended a dedicated agency to be birthed by statute for elections, criminal conducts in elections. I let ask that. Now, to the point, to the specific department that, or the area that you, you act on, logistics, where would, look, where would I not get the kind of money to buy vehicular assets and indeed you mentioned the helicopter and I was thinking <laughs> and I was thinking it was about time maybe somebody engaged me as a talk for I get chairman because come to think of it, I could I could be I could be more more, more ish than anybody working for if he could you know if, if he gets that kind of money to buy a helicopter these things still have to be outsourced. 
to no, but but Mr. Obara, uh, really, even though you are you're saying she's been over romanticized <laughs> and all that, it, there is there is a critical issue here. For instance, there is a state in Nigeria right now that we've heard stories that a governor who has a political rival has gone to deliberately grade the road, heap sand on the road, so much so that it is impassable to the area where that political rival is, which means INEC, because that's not a boat that they're going to use, they're supposed to use vehicles, INEC may not be able to pass to that place. In the case of things like this, there should be a backup plan, maybe one helicopter I, I or anything. That, plan B. So, so what, yes, what can the, they the do? The two of you are, let me, let, let me <laughs> so, use. This, so on, so on, in that kind of a place, uh, will those people be disenfranchised given, because no, of given, the selfish interests of the Given the illusion you've just yes. made now. It, it's not an illusion. Uh, it, it's a reference of a sort. So yes. it's, it's an okay. illusion of a sort. Yeah. Given, uh, and I don't want, to, because... For me, it's not been verified yet, and I know the quality. I know the quality of your journalistic this thing. So I will say reportedly, reportedly. I mean, apart from if if you make that, let, let's even get this clear because I, I was going even, to the, the, even, the, even the governor <laughs> himself. I mean, let's even put it. It's so it's it's not fake news. Because I'm not even saying the, it's fake news. So even the governor I said himself, reportedly. yeah, reportedly, because the governor himself has come out to give reason for. You know that particular no behavior. No problem. We want to work on the question. Okay. So I, I'm not even fighting the. the I just don't want I, to. I'm not contesting the fact. I'm just. No. I just don't and want it's to good. It. And it's good yeah. because it's not been. It's not been proven by your organization. You. You don't have. You. you it's reportedly. So we. We can. Have, at least we are safe on that. Given the. Given the integrity. Okay. Answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's but use having, reportedly. Having said that. I am one who believes that INEC must have an alternative for that. Mm. Because come to think of it, if INEC could have the Central Bank of Nigeria store its valuable documents or items, INEC has always historically, from when I was a young boy in Mushin, we had always known that our election management body used to work with the armed services. And one of the area, one of the specialities of our armed services, especially the, mm -hmm. the, Air, Air, the Air Force, would be, you know what, we need, it shouldn't be too difficult because yeah. there, is a, there is an inter, interdisciplinary uh, 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 entity that INEC has around uh, organizing elections. And it shouldn't be difficult for the INEC chairman to put a call to, to the chief of the Air Staff and say, sir, we, are, we have this challenge around this particular location. No, no vehicular object could get there as a result of, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the distance of the, of the roads as it is mm -hmm. that you are telling me that, you know, <laughs> but, and the, you know, and the Air Force should be able to say, ah, don't worry, don't worry, Chief, uh, uh, we should be able to deploy a helicopter. I wouldn't suppose, you know, <laughs> INEC is buying the helicopter. But, you know, okay, uh, yeah. but, uh, it's, that, it's on, on but you see, given the direction that the two of you were trying to pull me by the nose, <laughs> and I was seemingly refusing, okay, okay. let me gladden you guys now. We, we should see tremendous improvements in this round of elections. Yeah. Given the given the improvements i tell people that wiki and idom emmanuel both governors of river state and aqua ibom wouldn't have emerged wouldn't have emerged as governors if we had if we had the use of technology countenanced in the electoral act 20 2010 that was used to conduct the elections in 2015. You know what? Because at the court of first instance, that's at the uh, uh, elections petitions tribunal, they lost. At the court of appeal, they lost. It was not until it got to the Supreme Court that the Supreme Court said, you know what? The use of technology, that the use of technology was only, was only embedded in, uh, in INEX regulation, but that it was not so Indeed. we we will come back to you. Uh, that's because we have been joined by Nika Gule via Zoom and Augustine Ega. Uh, they'll be joined in conversation. Gentlemen, if you're here with us, it's a very happy day, and uh, it's good to have you join us. Nika Gule, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. 
Yes, I can hear you very well. I'm actually Nick Agule, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Your audio doesn't you seem well. to... Well, if you can hear me, can then hear I'd, me? I'd, I'd request that you please unmute your device. That would be uh, very my, great. My, and my, uh, my mic is Ega, Can you hear me now? It's unmuted. My mic is unmuted. Can you hear me? Nick Agule, it's good to have you this morning on The Ballot. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, Loud and clear. Yes. Uh, okay, so I am actually sitting here in Vandekia, uh, in Benue State. I have come to cast my vote, and Vandekia is the last local government before you get into Cross River State. Mm. So uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, good morning to the panelists, and good morning to all Nigerians, home and abroad. What's the situation like in Benue State? Is there any complaint? Because in some states we are hearing some complaints coming, uh, maybe because of logistics or because of one problem or the other. How is the situation like in Benue? I don't have the position now in all 23 local governments in Benue State. But at the same time, if there was anything that was happening, that was not uh, going right, it will be, it, I would have been aware of that. Uh, it would have become some sort of news because I'm very much connected to what is happening in the state. So, so far, it's been calm. There has been no news of a, a, either uh, insecurity or logistics problems. In fact, on my way yesterday from Makodi, which is the capital, uh, traveling to Vandekia, uh, I saw a lot of activities uh, by INEC officials. You know, I, I saw uh, so many uh, buses, you know, commercial buses that were were hired uh, by INEC at a point in uh, in Boko. Uh, I saw a, a, a great number of them. Then at a point after I left Boko, I saw some of them at a petrol station uh, filling up. So, so far, um, and I mean, I'm, I'm heavily connected on social media. Uh, so if there was anything that was on to us happening in Benue, it would have been picked up now by social media, and I would have been aware of that. So I can say that uh, Benue so far is calm and getting ready for the polls. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, where you are now. Uh, one of the issues that we've been talking about is the preparedness of INEC for this election. And over time, logistic has been a recurring issue that, is, that has been always an issue for us uh, and for the country. But INEC has said that 2023 will be different. Elections are stipulated to commence at 8.30, and that's it. I I'd like to ask you, do you have... Um, the presence of the officials right there and the materials already around. Uh, we're looking at the time now, and it's 7.40. So I am not yet at my polling unit uh, for me to be able to make an assessment if uh, materials uh, for the elections have arrived at uh, my polling unit. But I believe that INEC is well prepared for this election. INEC had four years four years to prepare for these elections. And within those four years, INEC have been testing their systems, their processes and procedures. They have even had opportunity to test the new electoral law in uh, elections, midterm elections that have happened in the Kiti and Oshun and in other places. So I think even Anambra, if I remember well. So uh, INEC, and, and if I look at the body language of INEC, you know, I have said this thing on this show before. I say that INEC was very instrumental to the passing of the 2022 electoral law. Uh, if INEC as a body were not for free, fair, and credible elections in Nigeria, they wouldn't have given their backing, so much backing uh, to the electoral law. Uh, majority of the the, the provisions in the 2022 electoral law were actually from INEC. And I think uh, I was speaking to an INEC official who said that the National Assembly 
only took like 25% of the provisions that INEC had wanted inserted in the electoral law. So from the conduct of INEC, right from the body language of the chairman down to the conduct of the officials, I have every sense of judgment to believe that INEC is ready to give Nigerians uh, an election that will probably be the best in our history. Uh, the reason being that the 2022 electoral law has actually empowered us as a people. I'm sitting here now on my computer. I have already de developed a, a template that has 176,000 uh, rows on it, each row being a polling unit. And as a result, some polling units are being posted on the INEC server. I will be entering those results on my spreadsheet. And probably by 6 p.m. today, we Nigerians who have voted will already know who has won. And we'll just be waiting for INEC to make it official probably on Monday or so. So this is an, uh, this is a, an electoral law that has already <coughs> handed over power to us as Nigerians. And I think INEC is ready for this. Okay. Um... I'd like to say uh, when you when you get to your polling unit and you have more activities happening there that you can talk to us, you please reconnect with us so that we can get inside information to what is happening where you are. Even if you don't have information about everywhere else in Benway State, at least where you are and uh, voting, we need to know that as well. Thank you very much. But just before we go, I mean, there's also um, the conversation we had in the studio. I don't know if you were part of it. And the conversation, the argument is, we think that at this point, INEC should be able to take care of some basic things. And I made reference to the Electoral Act and the fact that of 2022 and financial autonomy, which has been granted to some extent. And now uh, Oba is here also in the studio with us. And he thinks that that's in the books, right? So at this point, there's also a video priority today that made the rounds where a vehicle was reportedly broken down on, on the road. I mean, you need to see the vehicle. Very sad, uh, trying to take materials to cross the state. And uh, that video was user-generated. But I'm saying, at this point, should INEC not be able to um, cater for her needs, get her own vehicles without having to contract people, and, you know, just maybe, if I'm sounding too extra, <laughs> get on a helicopter. <laughs> That, that, that is going to be very difficult because yeah. um, we have 176,000 polling units mm. in Nigeria. And if INEC were to, to buy 176,000 vehicles, uh, that's going to probably the, the entire budget that is given to INEC. So the only thing INEC can do is that there are very, uh, you know, high quality uh, commercial vehicles. They don't have to go for rickety ones. Uh, they can partner with uh, commercial uh, entities, like the quality of vehicles I saw uh, doing uh, electoral duties in Benue as, as I was coming here, they were of high quality. So probably this is a situation where there was a misjudgment by someone who decided to go for a vehicle that was not uh, competent enough for these elections. But outside that, uh, one, one other thing with the 2022 electoral law is that if electoral materials don't come to a polling unit, and specifically the beavers, if that beavers is not used, the election in that polling unit will be postponed. Mm. You know, in, in, the, in, the, in the days before the 2022 electoral law, the provision was that if the card reader was not available or was not working, they resorted to manual accreditation. Mm. And, and, and most times, a card reader that was there, was working, will be sidelined so that politicians will be able to resort to manual accreditation and then they will go ahead with their shenanigans. This 2022 electoral law say we must vote by beavers. So even if a particular polling unit <laughs> does not have beavers, does not have electoral materials, their election will be postponed. And when beavers is found, it will be brought and the people will vote. So it's a good thing we are, we are, we are having this time around. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.